And every night, the TV screens uh, show us pictures of this humanitarian tragedy. We do see that in Europe, the impact is tragic, I would say. It is feeding populism, it is feeding Euroscepticism, it is feeding nationalist parties. The most significant problem is that we don't know what's going on and what will be the next. Unfortunately, many governments wake only to human realities when a crisis is fully blown. And for years, European governments have preferred to ignore regular reminders that the EU asylum and migration system is in dire need of reform and that the existing structures and procedures need a fundamental rethink. The migration crisis has polarized Europe and the Europeans like nothing before, it seems. It's too early to speculate about the success or failure of the current EU-Turkey agreement regarding refugees, but rest assured, things will not go smoothly. Lots of details need still to be worked out and uh, experience need to be gained. Right now we are at the peak of two crises, the security crisis and the migration crisis. And while they overlap in timing, they should not be confused. Those people who have arrived on our shores are precisely fleeing the same terror that struck us in the heart of Europe with the attacks in Paris and Brussels. It is evident that we are standing at a crossroads where we might need to reform some EU systems and concepts, but we are not rearranging our beliefs and values. There is no transparency, no objectivity, no real intention to include citizens into solution of the problems. But on the ground, we see only citizens providing solutions for the problems. It is very dangerous to, to speak about sovereignty as if we are building the nation state, I don't know, France in the 18th century. The whole public was agreed that refugees need help and that they should be fully treated as people in severe distress. We have to continue with humanitarian work and working on the acceptance of people running away from the war area. We all together, United Nations and European Union, should concentrate primarily on ending the war in Syria and work on the human integration of refugees who arrived in European Union, wishing them as soon as possible secure back home. We have seen this again warning by the latest Europol reports on the missing children. 10,000 unaccompanied minors uh, who crossed the borders of the European Union and disappeared and who were poten potentially victims of human traffickers. Many of the refugees are afraid to report the crime to the authorities because they are afraid that they are corrupted, they don't know what will happen to them and because they are not aware about their rights and duties in their host country. Not a small percent said that yes, they were. They were exploited sexually and they were exploited uh, in terms of uh, labor. We're trying to have policy solutions and not only talk about the problems we all know about. We need solutions and we need solutions not in two or three years, we need solutions now. We need a common European asylum procedure, but we also need all member states to um, participate in the allocation of asylum seekers. The migration crisis requires a pan-European response. We have to stop the war. We're giving Germany as a good example and some other countries, but in my opinion and from what I've seen, the biggest problem is not giving people the freedom to work. 
the, the very issue is it's like let let the people work you can advocate that but that means that certain that people need certain clarification there is not a single person that speaks english in little havana in miami the same could be said about San Diego. The same could be said about any Chinatown. Those people were culturally very different, and yet they're fully integrated in American society. They have American identity, they contribute to the workforce, and they're not viewed as, uh, as a negative uh, element. They're sticking in, in the center of the city. So I think that uh, we could come up with much more creative solutions if we di divorce integration politics from identity uh, politics. It's easier to accept that your country has spent 10 million euros to build a wall when you all the time listen about uh, illegals, about terrorists, so you, you kind of decide that the security is more important now than, than where your money goes or uh, where freedom goes, but Actually, it's not objective and it's counterproductive. Smuggling or human trafficking is a business model. It's a service people are acquiring. And it's an illegal service people are acquiring. And all the attempts to make this, this kind of migration illegal will only resort that going to the black sector. The question of managing migration is indeed one, one of the biggest issues that needs to be addressed proper European asylum framework and a proper European migration framework. We need a fast track procedure when it comes to subsidiary protection. You should stay together. Um, any kind of exits uh, uh, weaken the EU and just uh, pour the water to the mill of the uh, forces outside Europe uh, who want either weak Europe or no Europe at all. We also need to do is manage the relations between the 28 members of the European Union in such a way as to keep uh, the construct working. We have a situation now where the, um, the so-called migration crisis is beginning to um, impinge on all sorts of aspects of European integration. The prevention of loss of life in the Mediterranean is a very liberal response. The prevention of loss of life from terrorist attacks is a liberal response. What is not liberal is not taking care of the challenges. That Europe has to send the message of being managed well, of working well. It needs to work well. It needs to show that it manages the crisis from both the humanitarian perspective and the border protection perspective. So a structured response needs to explain publicly, needs to communicate to people that national security and humanitarian issues are not mutually exclusive. Part of the same response.